Yeah, to, to know the basic nature of mind and to understand the relationship between the basic nature of mind and everything that we experience is key. And the reason it's key is because it allows us to understand and make sense of our own experience. And so the basic nature of mind is wide open um, like a clear sky, completely relaxed, naturally present, alert and responsive. And um, we know, we hear many things in our life, but what's really important is that we can confirm them for ourselves. We, th we can check with ourselves and look in our own experience and see whether that's true or not. So if you just stop thinking for a moment and notice what remains. There's an alertness, there's a cognizance, there's an awareness, there's something that's aware of the next thought that arises. This is open intelligence, this is awareness. This is the basic state, the basic nature of your mind, the capacity to know. There's something about you that is fundamental and that is constant throughout all of your experience. And in that short moment of stopping thinking, all you do is identify it. You're not bringing it in or getting it from anywhere, you're just noticing what's already there. And my experience was that this was quite incredible for me to notice in my own experience what actually made me me. Because I'd looked to understand what is my identity, what is my nature, what's the nature of reality. And to have that simple introduction, to be able to recognize in my own experience awareness, open intelligence, that which is looking through your eyes, hearing these words, experiencing everything you're experiencing right now, not far off and esoteric, not difficult, not mysterious, maybe difficult to actually um, define and describe, but obvious and naturally present. And to be able to identify this in my own experience was just something incredible, because I recognized that this has always been present for me. This has always been the basis of my experience. Like I knew there was something that made me me. Like I, it was like I knew it, you know, but I couldn't, like, what is it? It's, it's not my um, experience, because that's always changing. It's not my ideas about myself, because they're always changing. From minute to minute, or day to day, or year to year, you know, who I take myself to be. The descriptions are changing. So it's not any of these descriptions. And, and so I looked for this identity, I tried to work it out. But actually, the identity was what was looking the whole time. The identity was what was seeking. So it would be like me um, looking for my eyeballs, like looking everywhere, like where are they? Where are my eyeballs? Where do I find them? You know, can anybody help me? And so with this training and this practice, you're introduced to what is already looking and to have a simple practice where you get to identify and acknowledge that as being primary in your experience all of the time. So you get to test out and to see whether that's the case or not. And this comes about through the simple practice of short moments of the instinctive recognition of open intelligence or awareness, whenever you naturally remember. They're very relaxed, very easy, not a struggle. It's not difficult to recognize who you already are, who you've always been. But it is important to um, consider this as a practice or a training. And the reason why that's important is because we've been trained to use our intelligence or our awareness to focus in on the descriptions. And when we focus in on the descriptions without recognizing them as being the dynamic energy of awareness and inseparable from it, then the descriptions are really confusing. So for example, with um, the question about cause and effect, I studied philosophy and so that's one of the big questions in philosophy is like, you know, is there cause and effect? And it's, you know, how that relates to me as a person and is everything predestined or is everything spontaneous? Or that sometimes it seems like, you know, when I eat that cake and drink that coffee, then I feel really hyper. So surely there is cause and effect. But, and so it just becomes this really intellectual um, consideration. And so to apply the practice with something like our ideas about cause and effect, for me, was fascinating. 
because I'd read lots of books about it and the arguments this way and the arguments that way and there was no solution and no real understanding. But when I began to apply the simple practice of short moments of open intelligence with these experiences of experiencing cause and effect, it opened everything up to a clarity and an understanding that I'd never read in any book. And that was basically to see all of my ideas about something being caused and all of my ideas about something being affected were simply the dynamic display of awareness. And that gives them a very different context because I discover that there's something about me that isn't caused and isn't affected. And that is the awareness by which all of the causes and effects are known and experienced. So the difference that this makes is that then I become able to use concepts like cause and effect in a way that will be of benefit. So it's not discarding or dismissing any of our experience, including something like cause and effect. So it's not like saying there is no such thing as cause and effect. It can be, if I press that switch, then usually the light will go on. It's a really handy concept. If I want to read, I put on the light. So we can use these concepts, but we don't take them to be statements about the actual nature of reality, because we know the actual nature of reality as uncaused, wide open and naturally present awareness. And from that perspective, we become able to play with all of the descriptions in a way that will be of benefit to ourselves and others rather than being mastered or feeling like we're victims to all of these fleeting experiences. So this is the shift that occurs and we can apply this to all of our experience. So all experience is this dynamic display, this dynamic energy of open intelligence in the same way that all of the reflections in a crystal ball, you could say the dynamic energy of the crystal ball. But none of the reflections in a crystal ball affect the openness and pristine purity of that crystal ball. So the crystal ball is the metaphor for the nature of our mind, our intelligence, our awareness. And it reflects everything without bias. And you can look in your own experience and see whether that's true or not. Think of your experience just today. You know, you've probably had positive thoughts, negative thoughts, neutral thoughts happy thoughts, sad thoughts, this incredible unpredictable display. But what has been constant throughout that? The capacity to know, the capacity to experience. This is awareness. What has experienced the high from drinking the coffee? And then what has experienced the guilt from drinking the coffee? It's the same thing. This is the constant. And so to identify this and repeat that recognition, short moments repeated many times, until open intelligence or awareness is obvious at all times, is where we find the stability and clarity in knowing how to make sense of everything that's appearing within awareness. So, for example, it's so good, you can take any question and you can apply this to it and it will give you an insight and an understanding that is impossible without this instinctive recognition. So I better prove that, hadn't I? What have we got? Like the ideas of equalness and evenness in terms of, um, you know, perhaps we have an idea that everyone is equal or that um, and if everyone is equal then um, why do I have all these judgmental thoughts about everyone, for example? And then how do I behave? You know, I think everything's equal, or maybe it's even, but I have all of these judgmental thoughts, and there are some people that I like to be around, and maybe I'm more sensitive now, you know, and I can experience the, the good vibes and the bad vibes around certain people and places and things. Well, how do, I, how do I navigate all of this? The way to navigate it is to rely on awareness when all of these thoughts and feelings come up. So, for example, the equalness and evenness of everything as an intellectual concept is really confusing. Because if I believe everything is equal and even, and yet my experience, my descriptions are really not equal and even, and they're changing all of the time, and you can think about your relationship with any person, any person, whether it's somebody you've just met or somebody you've known for your whole life, and you can think about how your thoughts and feelings about that relationship are changing and have changed, and are always changing. 
and it's incredible just to be real about that, first of all. You know, it might be somebody that you've decided to spend your whole life with, or somebody in your family that you've happened to spend your whole life with, or somebody you just met today. You know, it's like, oh God, I really love you, you're amazing, ah, oh, you're so irritating, I, can't, I just want to get away from you. Actually, I don't mind you, you're, you know, it's okay, it could be worse, or... And it's changing, or it's the same person, the same relationship. They're not changing. You know, they're, they're the same person, but our experience and our relationship and our descriptions about that are continually changing. So trying to tell yourself, yeah, but it's all even, when that's not our experience from a descriptive level, is really confusing. So what is the equalness and evenness? The equalness and the evenness is to recognize firstly our positive thoughts about someone, to take a short moment there and see whether open intelligence or awareness is the basis of those thoughts. Then when we have the negative thoughts, to take another short moment, repeat the short moment, and see whether the negative thoughts are also inseparable from open intelligence, like the color blue is inseparable from the sky, or the breeze is inseparable from the air. And then when we have the neutral thoughts, we can take a short moment there. And what we're seeing there in our own experience is the equalness and evenness is the awareness that is the basis of all of those ever-changing descriptions. And that gives us a completely different vantage on the ever-changing descriptions. And we become able to tap into the sublime wisdom that is available when we are recognizing who we are, which are these just wide awake, clear, aware, we are awareness. And we rest as that, as that awareness for these short moments repeated many times. And from there, we see everything clearly. So we can see the equalness and evenness of all appearances. And at the same time, we're able to choose where and how and who we want to spend our time with. But it's not done from a place of needing to um, react to every changing description. Like we've seen the effect of that. You can look at your life and see what happens in a relationship when you react on every passing thought. It's like, I love you, I hate you, I want to be with you, I've got to get away from you. And it's just a confusing way to relate. And like we, we all know it, I related like that for years and it was really confusing. And not just confusing for me, but confusing for everybody I was relating to. When we allow the thoughts and emotions to be as they are for a short moment, and we rest naturally, then we see that all the thoughts and emotions, they arise spontaneously in an unpredictable way. Have you been able to predict how you're going to feel about someone in any particular day? You might try it. Oh, I, God, I'm, I'm so happy to see this. I'm so happy to see my family, and I haven't, been, haven't seen them for a while, and oh, it's going to be wonderful. And then within five minutes of being back, the buttons are being pushed and the same questions and it's like ah where's the equalness and evenness I was so calm when I left India and now I want to kill them or you know it's so the only place we find the stability to knowing how to respond is through allowing all of those ever-changing descriptions to be recognized as what they are which is the dis dynamic display of awareness and that gives us the capacity to see that we have a choice as to whether we react to the descriptions or not. And this is a training, pro training up process because we have been trained to believe that we must react to our thoughts, emotions and sensations. And we've practiced that for many years. So to learn that we actually have a choice is also a training up process. And each short moment of recognizing awareness and resting there rather than automatically following after de a description, is the training up process. We're seeing that we already have a choice. It's not something that somebody gives us. You don't come to Balanced View and get this choice. You come to Balanced View and what you find is an introduction and then a support that will allow you to make this choice more and more easily. And it's so powerful to have this support because we've had the support of conventional society for decades telling us that we do not have a choice and this is the way that we have to relate and live. And to discover this choice and then to train up in it is actual freedom. It's the freedom to use our mind and use our time and our energy 
and our whole being in the way that we know we've always wanted to, which is an expression of perfect love. <coughs> we always wanted to relate with openness and love and care in our relationships. Like, I always wanted that. And I always found it frustrating that no matter how good my intentions were, I didn't seem able to do it. And there was always somebody to blame. It was either the other person or the other people or the organisation or it was myself and my own failings and my own inability to live up to my expectations. And as we rely on awareness we find the exhaustion of these faults, of these descriptions, of this reality that is flawed and painful and that we're no good at, we're a failure and we need to correct everything about us. And instead we rest naturally and discover this reality of complete perfection, great completion, where we're perfect as we are. Nothing needs to change about ourselves for this recognition. Nothing needs to change about you for you to recognize who you've always been. Amazing. Incredible. Unbelievable. Like when I heard that, it's like, they have no idea what I think and what I feel. If they knew that, then they wouldn't be saying that. So to discover in my own experience, through this practice and this training, that actually none of my thoughts, emotions or sensations were anything other than the natural evidence of open intelligence. None of them could be found to have an independent nature. And none of them affected the pristine purity of mind. And this is what I was given in this training, a way and a systematic approach to see for myself whether that was true and then what happens when I make that choice and how that then affects my ability to relate. So it's deeply profound in terms of you will understand the nature of reality and the meaning of life and you'll be able to get on better with your mother. <laughs> this, is the in this is the meaning of equalness and evenness. This is the profound meaning. <laughs>